All right, good morning, uh, President Sugami. I don't need this. Uh, Chairman Tan Gi Pao and members of the uh, EOS uh, Governing Board, uh, Professor Kerry C, Director of the Earth Observatory of Singapore, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to add the congratulations uh, and good wishes of the National Research Foundation, uh, one part of the uh, funding uh, agency, the other part being uh, the Ministry of Education, uh, to the uh, uh, President NT of NTU uh, and uh, Professor Carisi for this uh, official opening of the Earth Observatory. Uh, the EOS is one of a select small number of uh, what we call research centers of excellence uh, that is jointly funded by the NRF and the MOE. Um, and so I'm sure our MOE colleagues will also join me in uh, giving their good wishes. Both uh, MOE and NRF view the RC program as a very strategic initiative to build up several world-class research centers that would grow into peaks of excellence in our local universities. So the RC initiative, together with other NRF programs, uh, as well as a lot of efforts by agencies involved in science and technology, such as the ASTAR and the EDB, uh, would position Singapore as a leading nation in science and technology R&D and a major note in the global knowledge network. Although Singapore is a tiny country, its bold plans to invest in research and innovation are quite well known around the world. Just to cite some examples, just a month ago, uh, NRF announced the support of four large research projects of about $10 million each in the area of uh, aging. And a couple of days after that, uh, NRF announced the second award of the NRF Research Fellowship to 10 bright young scientists from all over the world. Uh, the NRF Fellowship gives these young scientists their first opportunity to lead an independent research team at our local universities. And some of them would be based in NTU and others would be at NUS. And a month even before that, uh, NRF also announced the award of nine proof of concept grants to researchers from the universities and polytechnics for them to take their research uh, from the lab and turn them into uh, prototypes for possible commercialization. So the proof of concept grant itself is actually just one part of uh, what is known as the NRF's National Framework for Innovation and Enterprise, which is aimed at building a vibrant innovation ecosystem in Singapore. So again, the RCE program and all these other things that I, I mentioned, uh, not an exhaustive list, uh, would be expected to grow the research and innovation capability of our institutions of higher learning. And they are in line with Singapore's strategy to invest in R&D as a driver for economic growth and as a foundation for long-term competitiveness. Uh, you have heard the Prime Minister uh, talked about, uh, even in the economic terms that we face, uh, that the Singapore government will not cut back on uh, investments in R&D because that's, that's for the long term. I'm glad the RC program has gone on to a very good start. Uh, three RCs have been approved for funding so far. Uh, the first one uh, is the Center for Quantum Technologies at the NUS, led by Professor Arthur Eckert from Oxford University. The next two uh, includes the Earth Observatory of Singapore, which uh, we are celebrating the opening uh, right now, and the Cancer Science Institute of Singapore. Uh, led by Professor Daniel Tannum from the Harvard Medical Center, and this was just uh, launched recently as well. Uh, a fourth RCE should be announced shortly, uh, subject to the approval of the NRF board, which incidentally is meeting this afternoon uh, to, to deliberate on this fourth RCE. The EOS uh, will receive $150 million funding, $150 million uh, funding from NRF and MOE for the next 10 years to carry out research in earthquakes tsunamis, volcanic eruptions, sea level rise, perhaps climate change, tropical storms, and all the exciting uh, stuff. Uh, but let me assure uh, those of you present here, especially those from abroad, that uh, Singapore is actually quite safe from any of this, <laughs> uh, these hazards. Right? So, so, so uh, we have been fortunate that we have been quite well shielded. Uh, however, the larger Southeast Asian region where we are located is an area of colliding tectonic plates tropical storms, typhoons, volcanic activities, uh, which is really fertile ground for earth sciences research. So the understanding of the earthquake geology of Southeast Asia 
uh, gained through the research by Professor uh, Carisier and his team at EOS uh, would certainly help the region to be better prepared for the inevitable earthquakes and tsunamis uh, when they arrive. Such knowledge would be highly valuable to government and industry alike. So we would expect that the EOS would become a really important center for information and expertise on earth sciences in the region as well as beyond. And I was mentioning to Kerry earlier that, you know, next time, every time there's an earthquake happening around this region, you know, they're going to come to him and uh, seek his opinion. I'm pleased that uh, uh, Professor C has started the EOS with a great team of renowned experts in earth science. Among them are Professor Chris Newhall, a highly respected authority on volcanism of Southeast Asia from the Philippines. I think uh, President Su uh, alluded to, to his work. And uh, Professor Tal, uh, Paul Taponier, an earthquake expert from the Institute of Geophysics in Paris. That's a French name which I will uh, hesitate to, to pronounce. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's the Institute of Geophysics in Paris. And he was the first, or one of the first, to understand the huge potential of satellite imagery for looking at active large-scale tectonics. And I'm sure the U.S. will attract many more noted earth scientists, seismologists, and geologists, as well as building up the capability of uh, experts uh, within NTU in Singapore. Uh, Dr. Su also alluded to this uh, prediction, or, 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 or sort of prediction uh, that was made about uh, uh, some uh, earthquake uh, potentially happening, and, uh, and that uh, something actually happened. I mean, this is the sort of uh, things that we would expect that reinforces our belief that it is timely uh, that this center is set up to be this uh, uh, center for uh, information and research. I understand too that the EOS has been the catalyst for a new education program at NTU. An earth science related postgraduate program will be established and expects to admit its first group of students in 2010. I'm sure the NTU would uh, give uh, the information uh, in due course. So in concluding, let me uh, congratulate uh, Kerry and his team for having already created impact for the EOS, even as the center is being set up. So that's really a really good sign. So I look forward to great and groundbreaking, uh, groundbreaking uh, in more <laughs> one ways than one. Huh? Uh, not, not, not referring to earthquake in this instance. Uh, groundbreaking achievements uh, arising from the EOS in the years to come. Thank you very much. <laughs>